how are you transitioning from a neophyte that doesn't know very much about trading or maybe you know a lot about trading but just don't know how to trade properly where are you transitioning to what is that end goal for each of you it's going to be different and for many of you the definition of success is going to be widely different some of you may have envisioned just the fact that you don't have to go to work that's that's it you've you've hit it you're done you've duplicated your salary at your job and then now you've basically got to the point where you don't need a job anymore others it's a specific dollar amount others it's a list of materialistic things that once you acquire them then yes then that means you are successful you know in the past many times asked that question you know what frames or what constitutes success for you and i'm asking to do that now again because some of you might realize that you may have answered this question in previous twitter spaces or tw twitter posts i've made by touching on this very question you know what is success to you and then i don't think it's enough just to say um just being better than i was yesterday you know that that's a that's a process of measuring progress that's not success success is something that you can define that has a very specific measurement that is very concise about what it is it's stating in terms of success that means you are able to do something or no longer forced to do something you have new freedoms you have financial independence or wealth all of you are going to have something that's totally different to somebody else that may reply some of you may have i want to be a billionaire i'm not saying that you can't but let's first start talking about replacing your job <laughs> okay so many people want to just jump way ahead into the future and just not realize there's a whole lot of work involved in between where you are right now and where you want to be and it's important that you don't get lost in the transition meaning that because of the things i'm teaching the things that i will be teaching and the things that you're actively learning that's already been taught you you may have this impulsiveness inside of you that wants to change everything that you're doing completely abandon it and do something entirely different and i have a lot of folks that were optimal trade entry traders that that was their model that was the flagship pattern for my youtube channel for the longest time it's just, that was it because i felt it was easy enough for people to go in and find setups because you can apply it to every time frame every market every asset class and then when i taught the model 2022 which is really an amplification of optimal trade entry so it's like ote on steroids it gives you a much cleaner approach to anticipating it seeing it where it forms and how to engage it and then i had the silver bullet come out this year and that one caused a lot of the optimal trade entry folks say this is it this is it this is the one i'm gonna forget everything i've done so far and i'm gonna just do this and maybe that has been beneficial for you and for others it maybe it hasn't been and now you're in that transition period be between finding success consistently with the silver bullet but not wanting to give up too soon on it and going back to your previous model i don't think that anybody should ever abandon a profitable model like i have lots of them if the market is talking to you in price action saying hey listen i know we haven't talked to each other in a long time but uh, i'm over here you want to have a conversation i've got some money if you want to take it out of the market let's let's talk about it that model may be communicating to you but you may be acting stubbornly saying no 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 don't bother me right now like an ex-girlfriend 
ex-boyfriend. I got a new relationship I'm trying to pursue right now. And I'm trying to do this silver bullet thing. It's a whole lot more videos with people on YouTube talking about this than in optimal trading trade anymore. It's not in vogue anymore. So I want to I want to be part of the hip crowd. So you're probably struggling with this. I don't want to go backwards. I'm going to keep going forward. And I want a new I want a new model to replace one that has been profitable in the past, but I want a better one. And I want to let the other ones go. I want to shed it off like an old skin. I don't ever get rid of anything that works. Men in general, you know, if you get a tool you love, you know, the hammer might have some dings on it. It might have some wear on the handle, but you prefer grabbing that handle or that old worn out hammer that still will do the job than grabbing something new at the shelf over at Home Depot because Carl brought it to work and showed everybody this is what he's building his new patio on the back of his porch or house. And everybody's like, oh, that's the greatest new tool. And you're laughing and thinking, my hammer does all that and it fits me. It fits my hand perfectly. It's well worn into my grip. You need to have that mindset. You need to have that mindset when you're doing this progression through what it is that's your success story and not forcing yourself to abandon things that work. Think about it like the, the medical field. You know, just because a new antibiotic may be discovered in the future, do we abandon penicillin, amoxicillin, erythromycin? No, they, they work. They have their applications. So your, your task as a trader should be to build a toolbox of things that work really well for you, that you've grown an affinity for. And not get lost in the transition of moving from one state of progress to a higher state of progress and then thinking that you have to just completely slough off everything before you. And where you're at right now, everything prior to that is insignificant. I only want new things. The problem with that mindset is it becomes a state of mind that you are a perpetual student and you never master one thing. You. You're not going to master trading. I'm not. I, I see a lot of people refer to me as a master trader. It's kind of cringy. It's shit because uh, I'm not a master trader. Uh, I wrestle with a lot of things mentally and chemically that doesn't always promote the easiest way to learn from me as a mentor because you know I got mental baggage I got to wrestle with. I'm a human being. I'm not AI, and I'm certainly not a master trader. But I have mastered myself in the sense that when I'm in front of charts, that's the thing that helps me focus. That's the thing that allows me to keep my mindset on one thing. And when you master yourself, how do you master yourself? By working on one thing and doing it exceptionally well. Don't try to go into some new PD array like the Reaper. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got to do that. That's awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Man, he keeps coming up with these cool name things like the model that I'll be releasing my book, Venom. It's deadly. Highly precise. Works every day. But you're going to read that chapter and you're going to swear up and down that this was the thing you've been waiting for all this time. And I was an asshole because I waited till it went into the book and not in a YouTube video. But you're not ready to learn that one. There's other things you have to understand and not discard it because everything I've done is a stepping stone that leads you to a greater precision oriented trader. You may not be an optimal trade entry trader anymore, but guess what that has done when you learned it, it taught you market structure. It taught you how to anticipate price runs from a specific area in a fractal and price action. And it taught you how to look for a specific level of retracement that repeats over and over again. And also to train your eye to observe a phenomenon that repeats in price. Now, over the years, I've seen people come to the YouTube channel. When I kept it there, like it was before I started uploading mentorship core content videos, it was pretty much 
stagnant. It sat there. And like a diamond, literally laying on the sidewalk that everybody passed by. They just didn't recognize what's there. Because it doesn't have any flashiness, doesn't have any kind of draw materialistically. You never saw my face. You never talked about, you know, the things that I drive and what I sleep in and how I spend my money on this and that. If I would have done all that, I could have been talking about any old indicator. And you'd love watching it because it'd be, well, I like, I like the way I feel watching this stuff. It makes me feel like I'm part of the Lux Society. The luxury. When none of that bullshit has anything to do with trading. What I presented and what I try to present is a way of thinking and formulating a procedure that you have to adopt as a trader. Whether you subscribe to the things that I say that the market does or doesn't do is irrelevant. Because if you go through the motions of doing the things I'm suggesting that you do and avoid the things I tell you you should avoid, by default, if you make an honest attempt to do so, you are growing into a proper mindset so that way you can be a good trader. If there's a sound logic behind whatever it is that's being implemented as a trading method, if you've conditioned yourself, if you've wrestled and, and subdued these inner demons that everybody has, greed, fear of failure, fear of missing out, impatience, the fear of feeling like you're insignificant compared to everybody else on social media that wants to flex and do this and do that. Everybody wrestles with that. Why? Because you are human. And none of that's going to go away ever. You will just be able to cope with it better. You'll say, yeah, I'm thinking about that silly shit again. I'm not worried about Tom, Dick and Harry on Twitter. I don't care if they like where I got in at. I don't care if they liked how I got out. They don't. I don't care who likes how many times I put on a new pyramid entry, how many times I took partials off. Who gives a shit? They're not spending my money. They don't pay my bills for me. And that's the mindset you should have. So when you start going through these processes, that books just simply don't do it for you. Why, right now, while I'm talking to you, I, I worked on the video that will be uploaded later today. Probably around 2 o'clock, I'll do it. But right now, it's rendering. I walked through the trade that I did on Friday. And I, I talk about how it's those things, like that video, that I can't teach in a book. Like, you have to see it. Now I can say to you in, in text, and I'll do it right here in the next two or three minutes. It'll, it'll, you'll see how difficult it is. Just imagine you reading it in text. When you're anticipating the market going lower and it shows an unwillingness to do so, and you identify signatures in price action that suggest that it is no longer a viable setup, that you have to either move to the sidelines and go flat and have no position open, or reverse and use a higher time frame mindset and model, which would be TGIF. Now, what the fuck does that even mean? What does that even mean, man? What's that mean? Right. You have to see it. I have to walk you through live price action and show you exactly at that very moment, just like I was showing my son on Friday. This is what I'm looking at. This is the very thing I'm looking at. I would need to write 50 books with dozens of chapters with static charts to try to communicate something that you'll see in a 45 minute video later today. But it's those videos that these impatient people that say to come here, I'm willing to do the work. I'm ready. I'm writing down what you say. Listen, there's a difference between taking notes, which is beneficial to you. Things that you want to do further study on things that mean much more to you about a specific topic than you didn't really understand something that's much more paramount that's more pressing when i say when you look at this down close candle and you think that that's a bullish order block what denies it as a order block what says it's not and what constitutes it being a high probability order block i talk about that in the video today but you have to have supporting studies and you have to have these 
discussions. You have to have a conversation with somebody that has created it. I, I'm the instruction manual. Okay, I'm I'm it. And if you think like if it's the VCR mentality, okay, if, this is dating my age, obviously, but the older folks in the crowd they know exactly what I'm talking about. And do it today with anything. You buy something that's technical, it comes with a user's manual. How many fucking times have you opened that up? It's probably still sealed in the plastic. It's like a running joke. They, they wrap it in cellophane because you're never going to open it up. But you're going to bitch about how the thing doesn't do what you paid for it to do. But it's the instruction manual's right there. And when VCRs came out, I watched my stepfather get pissed off, drunk, throw it across the room because he couldn't get it to work. And all he had to do is press the tracking fucking button and everything would have become clear. I'm the user manual. I'm trying to tell you how to use this decision. Oh, he's hiding things. He's overcomplicating it. He talks too much. I'm telling you what to focus on, what not to focus on, and where these things are going to pop up. But you're so impatient. You want to put that VCR tape in there and watch that porno and get your ass off. You want to get to the happy ending. You want to get to the story, get to the nuts and bolts. ICT, get to the fucking point. The point is, is you're going to fucking lose because you're impatient. And the people that are making lots of money, they either had that trait overcome by listening to me and doing the things I told them to, to focus on and remove the opportunity to do the things they shouldn't do. And it took a lot of effort, I'm sure. This is not easy. Or they just had ingrained in themselves through other things that caused them to be more patient. But impatience, that's one of the biggest hurdles I've had as a mentor. Watching students start with the greatest of intentions in the beginning. And then because of the adversities that come by natural progress, their impatience is superior to the desire for them to reach their success. Apparently, you don't give a shit about being successful because if you've let impatience be such a formidable adversary that prevents you from getting there, well, good grief, man. Your success story wasn't good enough to work hard enough for it. And that's usually the folks that just want to have that first payout. Their visibility is only there or getting that certificate of being funded or their first winning trade or whatever that withdrawal is that they take from the first winning trade in a live account. That's the visibility. That's all the visibility they have. And if that's what you have right now, don't trade with real money. Don't even try to do a funded challenge. You have to know where you're going. This transition from neophyte or break-even trader or failed blowing out your account type trader have a perfect trading week and without losing trades. It means that you have this consistency that yeah, you can have a losing trade. You can have a losing day. Maybe a losing week out of a month. But you're net positive on the month. That's a really good goal. 